Welcome to Softcore History. Hello and welcome back to Softcore History. It's a Jake Goldman episode, a Jake Goldman joint. And I'm joined by my podcast co-hosts, Dan Regester and Rob Fox. What's up, boys? Uh, don't uh, scare off the audience this fast. He's, yeah, he's trying to uh, lower expectations. But before we, talk, before we just rip on Jake for a while, we have a big announcement. If you want to get into that, might as well do it at the top uh, of the episode. There's a tornado. Yeah, we are broadcasting live during a tornado. You're welcome. Yeah, we We're do this. We're braver than the troops. Yes. We love the content. Yeah, I've always said that, though. Yeah, I mean, like, we dodge metaphorical bullets. Yeah. You know, like, cancel culture. A lot we dodge that. Yes, uh, 100%. That's the only bullet, but it's a lot of them. Yeah. So we, da- we dance around those. It's easier to dodge physical things, and bullets are physical. Yeah, like, you, you can't dodge a bullet you can't see coming. Right. I mean, I guess we could be more... We polite. fight, we're, we fight uh, unknown unknowns. We're fighting ghosts. But since we are in the business of dodging cancel culture, you might want to check out the other thing you're about to announce. Uh, well, I was going to let Dan announce it, but I can announce it. No, Dan, do it. We are now charging you for our content. <laughs> <laughs> It's the worst way to lead off that announcement, yeah, but yes. I appreciate it. Well, obviously <laughs> not this. Um, you're getting this for free. You're still getting one free episode a week every Monday. Uh, Monday night, video on Tuesday on the Drinking Bros History channel. Uh, but yeah, no, we are going to put out some more content, some, uh, some things we're going to test out, some trials. We did a game show with Coop and Joel. That's on our Patreon right now. It's not testing out trials. The first of the game show was great. It was great. Yeah. Uh, the mailbag, which we need to rename. I, I'm trying to think of names. The only thing I can come up with is Pony Satchel. Yeah, so we got two things on the Patreon currently. Uh, both are worth your time. I think we're going to do both a... Both worth... The it, Carrier $5. Pigeon? Yeah, the Carrier. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, $5 a month uh, gets you lots of different content. We've, we're going to get... You're going to get free content, or you're going to get extra content every week. Uh, we're not going to just not do anything with the Patreon. We're going to get... Like I said, not, not test things, but we're going to get weird with it. We're going to yeah. do some crazy shit. Uh, we've recorded two sketches. There's going to be a sketch week. Not every month, but there's going to be sketches every couple of weeks. Uh, we've recorded two of those already. We're doing a movie watch along. I think we're going to record it later this week or early next week. Probably mm-hmm. next week, yeah. We've already done sketches that we're starting to edit right now. Mm-hmm. We have uh, some cool stuff here. Coming yeah, but way. there's stuff live right now yes, on there. Two episodes live. And yeah, the stuff to watch. I think we're going to do the Patriot for our first movie watch along. Yeah, hopefully we can grab a, a friend of the show yeah. who has not seen. Jared Borslow. Jared mm-hmm. Borslow has not seen the Patriot somehow. Yeah, so really we, we need to make him watch it. Yeah, it'll be a historic movie watch along. Like yeah. history-based movies. All blah, blah, blah. For sure. So yeah, give us a look-see on the Patreon. Uh, where can they find that, Dan? Patreon.com backslash softcore. Forward slash softcore or whatever. Ooh, forward slash shit. It softcore looks history. Gross outside. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, Rob's over here like I'm from the Midwest. I know a tornado when I see it, and I'm like, ah, I'm just afraid of the weather because I'm a liberal cuck. Well, so I'm gonna die doing what I love. That's right. Stumbling over my words. Yeah, <laughs> drinking for me. Yeah, <laughs> the podcast you're also on just happens to be what you're doing. Yeah, while yeah, you're yeah I'm just here. Yeah. I swear to God, I'm going to see like my car fly away soon. Anyway, my rental is just going to be up in the sky. <laughs> yeah, Dan, the windows it, will shatter before you see it. You know, it'll, it'll be fine. Thanks for the encouragement. I One appreciate time that. I was driving through a, a tornado, like warning storm from between Austin to Houston, and I was with my wife. My wife's from Texas, uh, even though she's from Dallas, which is like kind of tornado country, but she's not really used to tornadoes. And uh, we were driving. And it was really scary. It was at night. And you can't see a fucking tornado coming at night, but there would just be like these loud thunderclaps and like it's bright, hailing now. Bright lightning strikes. Yeah, it's hailing. My car's me fucked. Ooh. Um, so we were driving, and she was like getting more and more worried. We had the dog in the car, and that we didn't have a kid yet, so the dog was her baby. And she was like, "But uh, so," and I was telling her like, "It's fine. Like you know, you, there's always tornado warnings and whatever. Like it, it doesn't. There's usually never a tornado. Like it's not doesn't happen as often as the warnings do." And it just kept, the weather kept getting worse and worse and worse. And I tried to tell her the more it's raining, kind of the less that means the tornado's coming. Hail's a bad sign. Yeah, yeah. what's sick about this hail is the rental, the insurance I have on the rental, does not cover windshield cracks. Haha. So <laughs> ha. Joke's on me, guys. Yeah. To, you got in an accident, and it's going to cost you even more money than it already does. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but I told, she was like, but the car, like, the, 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 the most tornadoes aren't, aren't strong enough to pick up cars, right? And I probably, because I Yikes. knew a tornado wasn't coming, I should have just been like, 
yeah, babe, it's fine. Like, yeah, the train is not going to play with the car. But since I knew we were probably okay, I decided to fuck with her. <laughs> and I was like, well, and this is the truth, but I shouldn't have said it. And I was like, well, yeah, I probably won't pick up the car, but that's not what you got to worry about. What you got to worry about is a tree branch or a rock getting hucked at you 200 miles an hour and <laughs> ripping true, through your though. skull. It's true. And she was like, what? And I was like, yeah, there'll be like a brick laying on the ground and the would pick it up and throw it at you 200 miles an hour. That's what kills yeah. you. Yeah. And then... It's worse than Antifa. Within... Like, <laughs> the strongest Antifa. Yeah, it yeah. is. It's God's Antifa. <laughs> Within two minutes of that, there was a massive lightning bolt and thunderclap, and she started weeping in the car, and I was just... Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm but an asshole. you know the risk you run when you're a storm chaser. Yeah, which I am. Very much so. That's what I do on the weekends. Go up to the Oklahoma. Just kind of wait. Just sit around. Yeah. So, something will come eventually. You'll get one or two. Got an AM radio. Oh, now all the weather stopped. Does that mean the tornado's here? Yeah, that means we're in the eye of the storm. Oh, That's cool. a hurricane. Oh, upgrade. All right, <laughs> sick. We get a couple days off. Hurricane. If you get killed by a hurricane, I don't feel bad for you. Yeah. You know it's coming. It is the slowest approaching right. natural disaster. Yeah, there's a lot of people that you could probably apologize to right now in Houston and New Orleans. But no. yeah. Or Why would I do that? That entire island that got wiped out like last year or whatever. You know it's coming. Yeah. You know it's you know it's coming. Yeah. It yeah, yeah. If you're Puerto Rican, just it's on move. You. Yeah. Just move to somewhere where a uh, hurricane is. I mean, how the have sharks you, figured it out? How have you not already? <laughs> that okay. <laughs> the sharks figured it out is hilarious because sharks have so much more. They don't. They don't need roads to move in the ocean. Right, but by no, I shark. I the uh, Puerto Rican gang, the sharks from West Side Story. And, uh, oh yes, of course. <laughs> okay, right. He, he actually meant know. Jake Paul because Jake Paul lives in Puerto Rico. I think he lives on the west side of the island. Though. And he got out. Mm. He made it out safe. Good for him. Well, enough about Jake Paul. Enough about sharks. And enough about current weather events because we know how much you hate them. Today, we're going to talk about an American doctor, in quotes, John Romulus Brinkley, who I will now refer to as JR for short. We will be covering a lot of interesting subplots within the narrative that is JR Brinkley's bizarre rise to substantial wealth including, but not limited to, diploma mills, xenotransplantation, Mexican border blaster radio stations. What, what's xenotransplantation? I don't want to tell you yet. Okay. Because it's, What's the time frame of this, by the way? Uh, late, like, he was born in 1885. He dies in 1946. Okay. Or two. Yeah, okay. so, so it's... So he's it's, rolling pre-World War II mostly? Yeah. Oh, okay. he, he dies, like, right as World War II started. Okay, okay. Um, Mexican border blaster radio stations, stolen elections, and of course, healthcare regulation. Uh, so, just to kick things off, stop the steal. He, he has a very legitimate argument for a stop the steal rally, and we'll get to it later. Uh, Brinkley was born to John Richard Brinkley, a poor mountain man. God, who, all of these people sound like serial killers. I thought this was going to be about a serial killer. Um, yeah, kind of disappointing. It's not about <laughs> a serial killer. He's got a body count. That's fine. Yeah. He's in a weird way. You could call him yeah. a serial killer. Yeah. But we'll explain more later. Cause serial, being a serial killer is like, uh, it's like pornography, you know? I, I can't define it, but I know it when I see it. You probably wouldn't call him right, a serial exactly. killer. Right, exactly. Like, there's certain things that are porn. The, the best part about that, by the way, the law that is like pornography is kind of defined as like, yeah, as, as judged basis. Yeah. Like, there's no like... Because the, I believe the Supreme Court had to go down into a basement and watch pornography together. Mm -hmm. And then one of the people was so blind, someone had to describe the porn to that judge. Oh, my God. But, right. All but, I like, Rob do... actually has squirrel traps in his backyard, and he murders dozens of squirrels a week. And I wouldn't necessarily call you a serial killer, but you are. Right. So, uh, you are. so this is a fun story. A little aside I could tell real quick. Uh, one of our former coworkers... One time came up to me with his phone and was like, dude, check out this video me and my bro made over the weekend. And I was like, okay, whatever. Uh, and he looked at it, and it was just him and his buddy uh, taking a blow dart gun. And it was like this highlight reel of them killing grackles with the blow dart gun. <laughs> no, I think I know who this was. That was a grackle code word for homeless man. Uh, no, it's a, it's a bird. For those who don't know, it's it's the worst bird in it's like, Austin. It's like half. It's like if a, a seagull and a crow had a baby. So you're just describing a homeless man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, homeless people are seagulls, basically, or seagulls are homeless people. It's the same difference, but uh, yeah, they were just. They, I mean, like dozens of grackles. The grackle makes the worst noise. 
<laughs> it's just like it's like one split second of the AOL dial-up modem. The yeah. Like the that, and they'll pop on. They will land on your plate if you're eating outside, and take your French fry and fucking leave. They're for those that don't know, they're actually in your face before they do that. Yeah, yeah, they will. They will also. They literally hire people in Austin to go around with boards and smack them by trees to get them to go away. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah, they're like Oklahoma State cowboy fans, just banging against the fucking. Yes, just like that. They do that. Yeah, it's insane. Anyway, um. Brinkley was born to John Richard Brinkley, uh, who was a poor mountain man who practiced medicine in North Carolina. No such thing as a rich mountain man. <laughs> it's unfairly John true. Denver, bitch. He wasn't from the mountains. Well, the mountain took him back. Yeah. Uh, he also served as a medic for the Confederate States Army during the American Civil War. This All right. is canceled. Well, we canceled. Can, we can, so we can stop talking about it now. Canceled. Well, this is his dad. So we're going to explain canceled. how the apple doesn't fall, fall far from the tree. Um, Brinkley's dad had a lot of marriages. His first marriage was actually annulled because he was underage. He was just ready to be married. So, so he married uh, someone much older than him? Uh, I don't know how much older he was, but after uh, his dad reached adulthood, he married four more times and outlived each of his young wives. So um, while I'm guessing that's probably pretty common in the latter half of the 19th century to outlive uh, your wife, uh, all of your younger wives dying in short order is still kind of a suspicious look were they giving birth they were they were they weren't dying giving birth but oh, like okay. th- some of them gave birth did okay. they exist in the 1800s did they what do you mean were they alive yeah this is well, all then, this is all before right. to, to so be, like every every day is you know, love is yeah, a battlefield it's a present right every yeah. day is a present <laughs> and also you know a woman's death in the 1800s could honestly you could probably chalk it up to like the sheriff comes around and he's like what happened and you can just be like Women. The vapors. Women. Yeah. It's like the, the shed is just covered yeah. in blood. It's like, it was her period. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, uh, ah, yeah. Checks out. Yeah. I came out of her vagina. I am a baby. So. Oh, the, <laughs> the angel <laughs> or whatever. Yes. I'm a baby. <laughs> oh, I was born a grown man. It's a miracle. Sorry, this woman's torn in half. Start praying. <laughs> um, in 1870, Brinkley's father at the age of 42 uh, married his last wife, Sarah T. Mingus. Later, the 24-year-old, yeah, later, uh, Mingus's wife, or Mingus's niece, Sarah Candace Burnett, this gets very confusing quick, uh, moves in with Brinkley's dad and Sarah T. Mingus. So, Sarah T. Mingus, the aunt of Sarah Candace Burnett, who moves in with them. Sensing a a Woody Allen situation brewing. Oh, yeah, the family called, they started, uh discerning the two, the family called Brinkley's wife, Sally, to differentiate the two Sarahs. And the niece, Sarah, quick, like quickly gave birth out of wedlock Let's to... Let's call the pretty one Sarah. <laughs> Let's call her by her name. Yeah. And we'll call my wife Sally. Yeah. You're Sally now. <laughs> yeah. You're Sarah. Yeah. You're, you're new Sarah. Yeah. You're new Sarah. Yeah. That's, I think, what happened because the niece, a uh, couple months later, gives birth to... Well, nine months later, gives birth to our story's main character, John Romulus Brinkley, in the town of Beta, North Carolina. Oof. But yeah, well, that's weird, but this guy's such an alpha. Well, <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, his dad. His dad's like super alpha. His, his dad's just putting up franchises. Yeah, yeah. but he lives in Beta? <laughs> yeah, I know. What the, that's weird. the dramatic irony of it. I know, it's really funny. Uh, <laughs> shut up. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so she named uh, our main character... John Romulus after his father, and obviously the mythical twin suckled by wolves that now, started. Look, this is what I like about the past. These people are barely literate, if not totally illiterate. They live in a place where they only see five other people. They drink alcohol distilled from like bark and rotten potatoes. If you saw them, you wouldn't even think they were homeless. Like today, like if you saw, you would think they were like an animal. Like yeah, so they were feral. feral. They're Some feral sort of people, yes. missing link human. They live behind my apartment complex in the woods. They have their own society. Not many people speak to them. They don't approach anyone. But those else. people are all still literate. They technically, all... like it's like they probably, they like almost, they definitely are. Like this, America's literacy rate is like ninety nine percent. Like they can all, like these people can't do anything. They, they, they know their skill set is like bananas low. It's making bark moonshine. And they still know who Romulus is? They know is. who Romulus is. <laughs> yeah. Whereas now, if you went up to, and I hate to bring them up again, the people that I just bought a Subway sandwich from, 
I, no, that's a character on the show. That's Subway over there. <laughs> they we we're gonna have him come over one day. Yeah, let's like, force you be on a like show. Kingsman Golden Circle. <laughs> yeah. We're doing a watch they'd be, along. They'd be like, "Oh shit! I thought the Pope or something made it." Like, I, even if they know what the Pope is, yeah. they don't know. They for sure don't know what a Pope is. Yeah, like it's these pe- these people had like just the weirdest knowledge set. Yeah, it's it's bananas. But um, yeah, she, he was named John Romulus after Romulus of Rome. Do you uh, think it's because so, some sort of dog was breastfeeding him at some point? <laughs> sure, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Go ahead and elaborate that. Yeah, you guys don't understand that reference. Sure, her her boobs didn't work, and she found a Romulus and Remus were raised by wolves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I no get. I, yeah, I, I, it literally. I literally just said the one that suckled from the teat. Oh. Remus and Romulus found uh, were the two brothers, and Romulus founded Rome at the Palatine Hill. So, I don't know. Yeah, that. but yeah, they suck. They it was raised by a wolf, suckled at her teeth. Yeah, there's a famous uh, picture okay. of it. The only Romulus I care for is the one trying to fuck Jerry. Roman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, Sarah T. Aunt, uh, I'm sorry, Sarah Burnett dies uh, when our main character Jr. is five. He moves in with Aunt Sally. And his father again, and they move to uh, Tuckasigi, Tuckasigi, Tuckasigi. I don't know, someplace in North Carolina. No, you got this. Yeah. Uh, then, about five years later, Jr.'s dad dies, and then he R. isn't going to stay with his not mom. Right. So. R.I.P. to a king. Yeah. Right. Uh, he gets sent to a one-room log cabin school in the North Carolina area he's in, and. Uh, it's held like during the winter. So it's not like a full school kind of, th- it's kind of a weird, like boarding winter right. school kind of thing. He's anyway. going to go live with this lady and 10 other kids. She's going to teach you how to read and you're going to chop wood and shit. Yeah. You know? Like he she might molest you. Right. Most likely knows, molest you. Yeah. Something like that. Doesn't have a husband. So he has been lonely. There's like a couple years. There is a husband and you're really screwed. <laughs> yeah. They're all going to do stuff to you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, his tormentor was a woman named Sally Margaret White. Sally Sally's. Yeah. A lot. I've never met a Sally I liked. Sally Margaret White is the daughter of a well off uh, school board member. And Sally delights in tormenting the young JR. Uh, school board? Who's on this school board? I don't school understand board. the details of it ca- either. It's a one room cabin with a multi person board? <laughs> yeah, it's very <laughs> strange. <laughs> you don't know the resources it takes to give an idiot education. Apparently. Right? You need at least one room and at least more than one person on a board. All right? That's How what it's reach quorum, you know? Don't teach my boy the letter X. Yeah, it's anyway. Too, it's too uh, much like alcohol. <laughs> Brinkley finishes his studies at 16 and began to work carrying mail around local towns and he learned how to use a telegraph. But one thing JR wished, however, was more than anything, he wanted to become a doctor. So as a telegrapher, JR goes to New York City to work for Western Union. And after he moved to New Jersey to work at a couple different railway companies, uh, he returns home in 1906 to his aunt Sally after hearing that she was unwell, and then she dies in 1906. So all of this kid's family is basically gone by okay. the time he's 21. He has no Typical. earthly attachments at this point or nothing holding him back. So uh, after that, he was comforted by the lady that used to fuck with them all the time in school, Sally Wyke. They get married in a couple months. Yeah, she was the- banging that child. Yeah, so Sally... This is uh, a Mary Kay Letourneau situation. This is a Miss Havisham Pip situation? No, Sally is only a year older. She was a kid at the school. So Pip and uh, who's the fucking chick he's always chasing the entire time? The one breaking the rabbit next. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) Jesus Christ. Forgot about that. (laughs) Anyway, um, so uh, they married on January 27, 1907, like shortly after the death of his aunt uh, in Sylvia, North Carolina. With all of his parents out of the picture and the burning desire to become a doctor still just there, he decided to go ahead and skip off the medical school bullshit and just become a doctor? Because you could, I guess, if no one was checking in on it? Doesn't sound like a burning desire to become a doctor. It feels like a burning desire to be called a doctor. What's the difference, I ask you? (laughs) In 1907, what's the difference? Because we're about to find find out quite a bit of, like, how far medicine has come, so but also go. how far medical right. regulation has what's, come. So what's hilarious about that, by the way, so this guy just declares himself a doctor in what, like 1907? 1907, yes. So my grandfather, Robert Edward Fox Sr., 
uh, became a doctor right before World War II. So, like, he became a doctor only, like, 30 years after this guy was so able to... I'm going to question his credentials. As well, you should. Yeah. You should question your doctor's credentials, always. I'm going to get a second opinion. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the funny thing about questioning your doctor's credentials, though, is, is it's like being like, uh, the, like, it's like NASA, like, being like, yeah, uh, the sun is this far away from Earth. And you're like, hey! Show, show me that equation. Yeah, yeah, come on. I want to see that equation. And I just want to see a degree. Yeah, then yeah. they show you the equation and like you don't know what it you don't know. You don't know what it bullshit. means. You don't I know what it bullshit. means. I don't You're understand like, this. Uh, yeah, right. I just wanted to see it. Yeah. You don't know what it means. No. Exactly. Where I lie about having a film degree from UCF, uh, these people have other human beings' lives in their hands. We also had a coworker that said he had graduated from a school at Grand X, who never actually finished school. No one ever checked. Name names. No. You don't I don't know if he finished his degree. You don't degree. have to finish school. No one ever asked right. for your degree. Wait, your can you tell me the school? Ball State. Oh. Yeah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I remember those things significantly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. There's two people. It could be. But anyway. Um, so he. And it's not the one Ric Flair hit on. <laughs> Okay, it narrows it down to one person. <laughs> anyway, uh, JR and his wife Sally decide to go up with the whole I'm a doctor now thing, and they start traveling around posing as Quaker doctors and giving rural towns like the old medicine snake show, like snake this oil is, show. This is the literal snake oil era. It is, and it, this is how this all this story yeah. becomes a story yeah, because this is, there's traveling this, around like Christopher Waltz and Django with yes. a giant tooth on the fucking wagon. Exactly yep. like that. So and they're a better and a better, a good way to put this too. not a better way. A good way to put this too is this is around the time, a little, probably a little after, maybe right around the same time of when a music man is set. If you know that musical where the guy just like nope. goes town to town, scamming towns into buying band equipment. And he's like, say that, people. I'll get you going. I'll make your town. I'll put your town on the map. You got to get a band. It's, no, that's what Monorail's based on. Like, oh, okay. Monorail's based on the music band. I, I know, yeah, I know Monorail, Monorail more. Monorail, that's based on the music band. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, Great and writing he, in Monorail. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's just like, hey, that. And, the, like, it's just scammers would go town to town selling snake oil if yeah. medical or and it's it's amazing like the internet has stopped so many of these kind of scams and created so many new ones right. now but it's it's interesting to see how prevalent it was at the time so like this is also the time where homeopathy is getting really big yeah and if you don't understand like what homeopathic treatment is it's basically taking a very active ingredient and making it so inactive it's essentially not there anymore okay. so this so, was the the origin of boss ass bitches Yes, MLM sweeties and mommies doing work mom, boss mom stuff. That's the birth of... This starts here. You basically. have my attention. Okay. Well, they're chucking uh, during this time what's known as patent medicine, which will get more of your attention, attention because do you know what a patent medicine is, Dan? Is it medication that has been patent? No. <laughs> you would think that. And it sounds good, but it's not. It's basically... Um, Snake oil, it's per any medicine with a proprietary blend that's not specified of ingredients. So, what does that sound like, Dan? Uh, this sounds like supplements. It does. We're in the supplement game, Dan. Sub John R. Uh, Brinkley. Sounds like I went to Total Nutrition, <laughs> and they gave me something in a uh, plastic bag that was unlabeled, white powder. It's going to get you fucking swole, and that's all that matters. Yeah. That's what you need to worry about. Your male virility. Your manly vigor. They're going to come up with some name that kind of, you shorten it like an acronym like it, SARMS so, yes SARMS very real very not good sounds for you. cool yeah terrible it's not steroids it's SARMS anyway uh Brinkley's next move was to Knoxville Tennessee where he played right hand man helping hawk virility tonics with a man named Dr. So Burke selling turn of the century boner pills yeah and it gets a lot weirder from there sick by the way when you're talking about girl boss or mom boss or whatever the fuck should should we call like a, a 14 year old who has a kid like a, a dad boy it's just like a boy dad but he's a boy too i'm not a Did boy just... not a dad I don't, I don't, not i'm not a girl yeah, yeah I'm, I'm trying That's there's fine. there's That's a joke, bad joke it's fine um Let's move at, on from <laughs> after this in knoxville brinkley settled Give with him his another chance 
Rob, run it I back. got nothing behind <laughs> try, that. Try it. Nothing behind that. It's been wide and good. And now it's sunny outside, so we'll continue. After this what sti- if we died? It's so sunny outside. What if a tornado actually just ripped through us and this is he- heavens outside and they're waiting for us to finish the show? You're, you're obviously not invited, but me and Dan go. Yeah, on. clearly. You're in hell. Yeah. Wait. In heaven, they're waiting for you guys to finish my episode? Yeah. And I can't do it? Yeah. Do you get my laptop? Mm-hmm. Well, why would I need it? Heaven, I just presume, floating. has an yeah. Apple store. <laughs> but you won't have my doc. No, it'll be the way to the episode. It's just kind of programmed into our heads. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. That's how God works, huh? Anyway, uh, Brinkley leaves Knoxville around. and settles in with his wife in Chicago, where they celebrate the birth of his first daughter. Uh, the new father enrolls at Bennett Medical College, and while one would hope that the birth of his daughter meant that he was getting on the straight and narrow and trying to go legit in the medical world, we wouldn't have an episode on this guy if that was the case. Right. And I got to tell you, you know, that the having a kid stuff, it really only keeps you going for like three or four weeks before you just slide back into being a piece of shit. Go right. on to our Patreon to find out more about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like watching a Jocko motivation video. <laughs> <laughs> Same amount of motivation and just... I, I'm actually not familiar. Yeah. Like but. you see that kid and you're like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to fuck do it, man. This is it. It's different now. I got this thing. But then like three weeks later, you're not a marathon runner. Yeah. And, you know, it's just not, it's just not in you. Well, in the metaphorical three weeks later, we find out that Bennett Medical is an unaccredited school with questionable curriculum focused on eclectic medicine. Um, eclectic medicine is a combination of herbal, physical, and pseudoscientific that studies. That's not the descriptor you want for medicine. Eclectic? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's for someone's weird house. So are you just... <laughs> like, are you someone's just, th- yeah, taste in music. Your, yeah. <laughs> like, Sounds like you're just describing Austin University right now. Yup. Pretty yeah. much. So uh, basically, you're treating patients and not pathology. So you're not trying to find out what's wrong with them. It's like, oh, this helped for a little bit. That's the cure. Here you Everyone go. Everyone wants a doctor who only treats the symptoms. Yeah. Right. right. It's like Just stop my symptoms. That'll be fine. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, that's what most people wanted back then, though. That's why it's homeopath- honestly still what probably most people want. Now. Yeah, truly. Um, so basically, you know, if it works for you, that's medicine. That's basically the whole concept of it. Right. So that a lot of studying of like ancient herbs and things like that. <laughs> medicine is whatever works. Yeah. So uh, Brinkley worked for Western Union as a telegrapher at night and attended classes during the day. While debts mounted from tuition, the cost of raising a family. And from Sally's self-centered whims, according to, he commissioned his own biography at one point. Oh, so, so he got into massive debt because of a woman named Sally. I've, I'm familiar with this. <laughs> are, are you? It happened to you? Sally May, baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'll do it. Yep. Um, at school, Brinkley was introduced to the study of grand, uh, not grandular, glandular extracts and their effects on the human system. He determined that this new field would help move his career forward, and boy, did it. Um, But before we get to that, after two years of studies and even deeper debts, Brinkley doubled his summer workload by taking two shifts at Western Union, but came home one day to find his wife and daughter gone. Sally filed for divorce and child support. But after two months of payments, Brinkley kidnapped his daughter and fled to Canada. They didn't have Amber (laughs) Alerts back then. They did not. They they didn't have the Mann Act either, I don't think. You can do whatever you wanted back then. Yeah, what you even could, is a kidnapping back then? Right. Uh, they couldn't obtain extradition from Canada, so she dismissed the suit. And uh, Brinkley returned to Chicago with the child, and they got back together. Oh. In 1911, before Brinkley... called a tiff. That was just a spat. Yeah, yeah. just a little tiff. In 1911, before Brinkley... my wife did all the time, to be honest. <laughs> you kidnap Rory and just drive to Canada? Yeah. Or I guess Mexico for here. Yeah, either one. It's fine. Yeah. I'm like, I'll kill you, you bitch. Don't ever come near me again. And she's like, well, don't take the baby. And I'm like, shut the fuck up. And I'll, you know... And you guys make out. I come back like a week later. Yeah, this sex is great. Honestly, it's all role-playing. It's like a month-long role <laughs> It's just a very long... Role play where you kidnap spicy. yourself. Keep yeah. Yeah. Loveless keep marriage. Spicy. Yeah. What do you think yeah. that uh, was? A Hindenburg baby? Lindberg baby? Lindberg baby. Yeah, that was. Uh, that was just a. I think the Hindenburg baby is a little different. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. baby was on fire. Anyway, um, in 1911, before Brinkley was finished with his third year of study, Sally left him again and bore him another daughter. Uh, in that order? <laughs> somehow, yeah. Uh, Brinkley left Chicago and his unpaid tuition bills to return to North Carolina and join his family. There, he began working as an undergraduate physician. Uh, he failed to establish himself, though, and he moved his family around to different towns in Florida and North Carolina. 
uh, packing this is up the America that we need to have again. Yeah, just like we oh, I didn't make it in this a, city. Yeah, go to this one. Go to another town. New yeah. person. No one knows you. I have debts. Yeah, I'm gone. Yeah, I'm out. So, so uh, he was like, man, I'm still not being successful. So in 1912, he left his family to try and regain the thread of his education. I agree. They with were holding him, him back. His, I agree with him that his family is has always been the. Uh, you know, kind of weight around the his ankle. ankle. Yeah. 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 So uh this time he goes to St. Louis, Missouri. Hell yeah. Say- you can find me in St. Louis. I'm all, I'm, all, I'm all about this guy now. Yeah. He was unable to pay Bennett Medical College the tuition he owed them, so they refused to afford his scholastic records. So they aren't even sending his eclectic medicine scholastic records anywhere. Right. So he's trying to apply to another medical school. Uh so Do you know which one? I will yeah. Um it's he Basically, oh, which ones he was trying to apply to? Yeah. No, I don't. Um, but he quits and decides he's going to buy a certificate from a shady diploma mill known as the Kansas City Eclectic Medical University. So he just Same. buys a diploma. I, well, I'm glad that eclectic medicine is just kind of around. Like, it's a <laughs> na- nationwide thing. Yeah. It's like, oh, what kind of a practitioner are you? Oh, eclectic. I'll get you that. If you have an eclectic medical degree at this time, you can practice medicine legally in eight states. Sick. You're an eclectologist. Do you have the yeah. eight states? Um, I don't. Sounds like Missouri and Illinois are two of them. Uh, mm-hmm. Missouri, Illinois. Oh, I and believe. Kansas probably. Kansas, Kansas is one. North, North Carolina. Texas one. is one. Basically like Tornado Alley and um, sure. Midwest. And then I think North Carolina. When you're pulling a two by four out of someone, you need eclectic knowledge. That's right. Um, so they have their third daughter and the family of five immediately moved to New York City after he buys that degree. And shortly thereafter, again, back to Chicago. At this point, Sally's like, you need to fucking stop. Like, you're not making enough money doing this fake doctor shit. Also, good. This is just so much moving. These are like three-day train rides or some wild shit. Like, fuck that. Yeah, so eventually Sally's like, fuck this. I'm moving back to North Carolina. She goes to Chicago. So much moving. So he's like, I got to still be close to the family. So he moves to Greenville, South Carolina with a man named James E. Crawford who uses the alias J.W. Burks. The two open up their shop called the Greenville Electromedic Doctors. They put electricity in the name because that was like a hot thing yeah, to yeah, put in names. Yeah, it sounded tech, high tech. Yeah. And- Can you imagine having the word electric means you're high tech? It's very steampunk. Yeah. These are steampunk doctors. And so they base all their shit around... Um, male virility and manly vigor. So they get back to the boner pills. It's, it's supplements always come down to Shocking you're not life. enough of a man right? and you're losing it. Yeah, yeah. back to being an alpha this from is, a beta city. Yeah, this is low T 101. So one of the things they did was inject colored water into their patients at $25 a shot, which would be $700 today. And they would tell them that it was electric medicine from Germany. Uh, so that's like getting an IV today. <laughs> like you go to one of those IV spots and like, dude, it's got stem cells in it. It's got fucking. <laughs> I all, wish it had stem cells in it, right? I would definitely go if it had stem cells. I would yes. be getting an enema from. Like I would just be like, <laughs> so to put the stem cells up it, my just butt. It's B yeah. vitamins. Right? Yeah. Uh, so it's great to prevent a hangover. Like I did it before my wedding, but like, yeah, it's not gonna. Yeah, this is why you have to have a friend that knows how to throw in an IV. Yeah. And then you just do it at home. So they obviously are running a scam. They skip a bunch of bills, don't pay a bunch of people. I think they have 30 to 40 local merchants with unpaid checks. Uh, They end up bouncing and going to Memphis. In Memphis, Brinkley meets 21-year-old Minerva Talitha Minnie Jones. Well. uh, A friend of Crawford's, his uh, co-founder of this fraud business. Because his boner pills are working. Just like that, after a four-day courtship, they get married. Yeah. And he's still married because to Sally. He, he's virile. Yeah. yeah. He's laying some good That's pie. the other thing, too. You can just go to another town marry another woman. No, yeah. No it, way to check. They, they don't have interstate no record way, keeping. No yeah. way to check. So Whole other uh, family, you're raising. So this is the honeymoon they go on after the four days of getting to know each other. They go to Kansas City, Denver, uh, Pocatello, and Knoxville. Brinkley was arrested in Knoxville and extradited back to Greenville where he was put in jail for practicing medicine without a license and for writing bad checks. But instead of taking this on himself, Brinkley ratted out his partner. He told the sheriff it was all Crawford's fault. And uh, he gave information enough for them to get him. They settle all this shit out. Um, Basically, you know, they get out. Minnie's dad, his new father-in-law, kind of bails him out for the value of what would be $5,800 now. But he's like, you know, you got to figure out how to pay this stuff off. At this time, his ex-wife, or his... Oh, so Minnie's dad. 
Minnie's, the, does the, Minnie's dad know that he has another wife? No, no one does. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so s- this is where Sally Brinkley comes back and informs Minnie, like, hey, we're not divorced. He's a bigamist. Right. Like, uh, also every- very trusting of the dad, uh, a man who has moved several cities for unpaid debts. Yeah. <laughs> lending him $5,800. <laughs> yeah. Just a bonehead move. It's like, well, he's a doctor. He can pay for it. You know, fool me once. <laughs> fool me 35 times. <laughs> So they move around a bunch. Eventually, uh, he joins the Army Reserve Medical Corps to just start making some money because I guess the Army is like, no, whatever kind of doctor Fuck you are, we need him. Yeah. Uh, Wait, what, is this pre World War One? During World War One? It's pre World War One. Okay, great. Uh, Come on, man. Eventually, eleven ish. Yeah, I don't know. It's moved around so much. Is, is he doing all this in the span of like? Yeah, he's in eighteen a, months. Good it's, he moves like he that's moves like every actually, six months. So when he becomes an Army Reserve doctor, he's actually in Arkansas. At the time, man, that's the reason we're doing an episode on him is he's just able to teleport. That's right. Yeah. He's that's the really, that's the big we secret. Bury that lead. Yeah. Xeno transplantation is teleportation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, no, it's not. But uh, he eventually accepts an offer to take over an office of another doctor who is moving out of state, and he ends up in um, God, where is it? Milford, Kansas. Ugh. So uh, this is now like a mere twenty to twenty three years. Yeah. So like before. My own grandfather went to start a medical school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... I can show you the Midwest. Be- right before he goes back to Milford, though, he finishes up at the Eclectic Medical University. Yeah. That was a diploma mill. Right. And gets his degree, like, for real this time. You know what I wish was still a thing? It was, what? like, big in the 90s, maybe before you guys don't even remember it. But it was, like, a plot to a lot of, like, 90s teen shows or whatever is a quote-unquote beach college. Oh, yeah, Saved by the Bell. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I got into this school. I finally, did. I got into college. It's the only one that took me. And then it's like, you find out it's, it's a It's a Santa school. Monica Pier, yeah, like, it's a scam building. School. Yeah. Um, anyway, this sounds like that. Yeah, so while he was finishing up his degree, though, he took a, a job as a doctor for the Swift Company, and uh, he would, like, patch minor wounds and, like, study animal physiology because they were doing, like, meat packing and stuff and animal slaughtering. Perfect. Uh, he learned there, though, that the strongest of the animals the most, with the most vigor were goats. Doesn't seem accurate in no, any way. No, it was. So uh, once he moves to Milford. You ever fight a goat? You've never fought a goat. But you Kick haven't. your ass. Do you wonder why you see horny goat weed in all the uh, gas stations around here? I will say uh, I've been to a fair amount of uh, pettings, like children's pettings, where you give a uh, the goats, the little bottles, right? And you stayed away from that goat, didn't you? I, I never had the courage to confront the goats, even to, even to, even to appease them. Why I don't knew. you appease the goats? They're sideways, they're weird sideways eyes, I can tell. They're, they're rectangular pupils? Mm-hmm. They're just chewing on some wheat. Nah. Looking at me. They know. They know you can't fight. Yeah. Anyway, uh, he actually builds up a little bit of a reputation in Milford because it's in 1918 and the Spanish flu is happening. Okay. So he's like the only idiot that's still going in house, no yeah. mask. Like, yeah, I'll go. I'll good. go check on you. Uh, anyway, so he gets himself a good enough rap. People don't really care that he's had a bad history before. So he's established himself. Um, during this time, he strikes upon the idea of transplanting goat testicles into men. I was actually going <laughs> to randomly ask if he was going to like infuse like do like a goat blood uh, transfusion. This is what Xeno transplantation is. So okay. he, from his time at the Swift company, watching goats get slaughtered, mm-hmm. he's like, huh, I wonder if these guys die strong. They, they die real good. Yeah. They die tough. I wonder if that could help men's ball problems. Like that's sure. That's, that's the line. Yeah. Why not? That's that thin thread Probably, connecting yeah. this. It's like a vasectomy where they, but they just fully cut off your nuts. And then what? Like, Stitch the it's, goat. It's worse. Goat it's, vas defrons onto yours and um yeah. So I mean, he bas- Do- Dodge Ram is it's a wonderful vehicle. The worst part. Ram is a much more powerful animal than a goat. It's just a bigger goat. One and I the thought. same. Yeah. No, a Ram's a big ass ass asshole, asshole motherfucker. Like a goat's like a little <laughs> like a ram will murder you. So will a goat. I don't think so. So the idea came to him as a joke. Right. So uh, the idea came to him when a patient came to him asking if he could fix someone who was sexually weak. Brinkley resto- responded. <laughs> came to him <laughs> for the other person. 
<laughs> I yeah. was like, dude, I got this guy. No, the guy, the guy came for his own personal. Oh, okay. He like, was like, I'm sexually weak. <laughs> Listen, yeah. every, every good bit starts as a joke, and then it just slowly morphs into your personality. Yeah, into your full personality. <laughs> Prickly responds to the request by joking that the patient would have no problem. If he's like, hey, if you had a couple of those goat glands in you, you'd be great. And the patient then begged Brinkley to try the operation. <laughs> really, doctor? Which Brinkley did for $150. But that's from his biography. So the patient's son actually has another comment in another article okay. in the Kansas City Star that said Brinkley had, in fact, offered to pay this guy handsomely if he'd go along with the experiment. Okay, if he'd so guinea pig. He wanted, Brinkley wanted to figure out if he could put goat testicles on a human being. Yeah. And this guy, who said he had a sad wiener, even though he made a kid. Yeah. Before, I assume... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Was like, it's not working anymore. Please help me, please. <laughs> right. So, it's like frankly, fucking... was like, well, I think option A is we put goat nuts in you. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, sold. Yeah. That's what everyone's doing at the, in Zurich. So, funny enough, it wasn't uncommon. It wasn't necessarily goats, but animal testicle transplantation was okay. pretty not insane. Cool. Um, at goat the time. doesn't even seem big enough. You'd want like horse or something, right? Like just something real wild. Yeah. Will I, the beast testicles. Well, you got to be able to carry them around and not break your sack off. I disagree. Okay. You want the, yeah, these are my sack lesions from how heavy my balls yeah, are. Yeah. You want to, you want them to be heavy and <laughs> it makes you manlier. stronger. Yeah, that's what right. What is it they say? The the weight doesn't get lighter, you get stronger. And yeah, you're, the bigger the bean bag, the easier it is to hit the, the top of the clit. Yeah. With that sack. Everyone knows that the scrotum <laughs> is what is what are you are you just doing a lot I guess if you're you're hitting doggy, from, you're hitting yeah. from behind and, and it just, just clap in the clit. <laughs> Some clap oh. clit clapping knockers, huh? What I do is I do it missionary and I'm just rubbing the tip on like the belly button and the balls are doing the clit work. Yeah, yeah. You put the dick in the belly button and the yeah. balls go in the clip. That's mm-hmm. what I learned in sex ed in Florida. Yep. Yeah, that's right. I mean, clearly only one of us has had sex correctly. Clearly. It's you with I don't the remember baby. last time I had missionary sex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Loser. Because you're not doing it Guess right. Guess you're trying not to <laughs> only, have a baby. Only one of us is for sure not a virgin. It's true. Uh, so anyway, at the clinic, Brinkley began to perform more operations. He claimed would restore male virility and fertility through implanting the testicular glands of goats. Uh, the cost was $750 in operation or uh, about 10 grand now. Uh, following one of his crude operations, basically how it would work is the body of a patient would typically absorb the goat tissue as foreign matter. Uh, the goat gonads failed to engraft into the body as they were simply placed within the human male testicle sac or some t- connected. Like he just, he just put him in. He just put him in, dude. He just slipped. Jesus so you'd be walking Christ. around with four nuts. So, oh, he put him in with the other. With, yeah, okay. he wasn't removing the balls. He was just throwing goat testes yeah, into the sack. Shit. Yeah, yeah. So there's no medical. Like there's nothing connecting. It. Little it's just osmosis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just basically like it being there is gonna up your blood serum yeah, testosterone. Some four wheel drive, baby. <laughs> he would also do this for women in their abdomen near the ovaries too. Ah, perfect. Yeah, and he, he would, would also, he would inject the women with the testicles. It, sometimes testicles, but he eventually switched to ovaries as Goat well. Ovaries. <laughs> yeah, on top of ovaries. Did well, the women the even thing. live? <laughs> Uh, like I understand the man being able to like I guess qu- like figuratively walk away from the <laughs> from the surgery. I feel like the woman just dies on the table because he's just cutting her open and shoving parts of an animal into her stomach. There's actually a little anecdote that comes up pretty soon about what the people are like that have to deal with his post operation. Yeah. So unsurprisingly, in light of his questionable medical training, which is 75% completion at a fucking eclectic medical school, uh, frequency of operating while intoxicated and using less than sterile operating equipment. Mm-hmm. Uh, some patients suffered from infection. If he's drunk, he's sterile, right? Like yeah. he's so soaked in alcohol that he is actually, he's just pouring moonshine on his bone saw. Yeah. yeah. And he's right. like, that's good. That's fine. He's, fr- he's a mountain person. Yeah. Yeah. This, all checks out so far. I don't actually know if there's anything surprising about this story. No, there's nothing. So uh, an undetermined number of his patients died. Brinkley would be sued for more than a dozen times for wrongful death between 1930 and 1941. Soon after Brinkley opened up shop, he scored an advertising cue that made major newspapers come calling. The wife of his first goat gland transplantation, so this actually answers your question, Rob, about the kid, gave birth to a baby boy. 
which he then used to promote goat glands as a cure for not only sterility in men. So the guy that the son was like, Hey, he actually like fooled my dad. Yeah. The guy did get his wife pregnant. That son, the child sounds ungrateful. Yeah. Uh, and I don't want to, uh, get too controversial here, but anti-science. He's a little anti-science. I mean, anti-science goat balls go into testicle sack with testicles. Mm -hmm. Now baby, baby come out. Yeah. And you I only need it to happen once for it yeah. to be scientifically sorry, true. Oh, oh, do we forget what two plus two equals? We forget ma- how to do math here? Yeah. Four balls more than two balls. Yeah. yeah. All he, ha- he had a hypothesis and he proved it right. Right. This and like, he, it's like in, uh, this and is, why repeat it, right? Why not repeat it, I mean? This is the type of thing where I'd get angry in math class where I'd get the answer right and then, well, you didn't show your work. Well, who the fuck cares? Well, it's like us going to the moon. We've been there. Why do it again? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he uh, starts a whole publicity tour and it start, he starts making a bunch of money doing these procedures and it attracts the attention of the American Medical Association, which sent an agent to the clinic to investigate undercover. This is the little anecdote. Great. The agent, Your credit tape. The agent credit found tape. a woman hobbling around Brinkley's clinic who had been given goat ovaries as a cure for a spinal cord tumor. She was hobbled over, like hopping around. Yeah. Like, oh, this is the best. My I tumor. Did it. First off, I don't know what ovaries have to do with tumors. <laughs> He's like, oh. oh, he started saying it cured everything. Okay. Yeah. Like, know, hey, this is like... a cure-all. This is a fucking, uh, what is it, like a panacea or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they're like, okay, we got to keep an eye on this motherfucker. Yeah. So uh, from then on, Brinkley was on the AMA's radar, including catching the eye of a doctor who would eventually be responsible for his downfall, Morris Fishbein, who made his career exposing medical frauds. So this was really the era I feel like where they cleaned up a lot. Like yeah, it, this was when, this it, is when like medicine became modern, probably around the time my grandfather was going into medical school. Like you can, they had to really you can sweep a lot away of your grandfather's out. quackery all you want. When the, yeah. Yeah. When the fish man shows up to your doorstep, you're fucked. Yeah. Um, so at the same time, like I said, other doctors were also experimenting with gland transplantation, including Serge Voronoff, who had become known for grafting monkey testicles into men. In 1920... Also good testicles. Great testicles. Also, yeah. I that, would take the monkey testicles. Now, would, te- what testicles would, would you be... I prefer the monkey testicles. What testicles would you be wary of receiving? Where you're like, all right, you're a quack. Like, obviously, this isn't good medicine. Duck testicles. I don't think they have testicles. Exactly. Well, they You're have a quack. <laughs> they have a giant. Duck. They have joke. a corkscrew penis. Corkscrew penis. Yeah. Oh, well, hold um, on. Maybe not so quackery after all. Where do I draw the line on my testicles? Yeah. Any testicles smaller than your own? What's a nut too far for you? Maybe some bee testicles. Bees don't have them. Yeah, they, they do. Do they? And they explode when they nut. That's Anything a bee does, it dies. Just kills them, yeah. Yeah, like a bee like gives a high five, it fucking dies. Bees are... What's up with all these animals that are so hard to fucking save, needing to be saved? I don't fucking Pandas, yeah, stupid. Right. Honestly, That's the, the testicles. I, I don't want panda testicles. They don't work. They don't. No, the, the lowest. No pandas of ever tried. Yeah. The lowest of teas. They never want to fuck. Eat wood. That's I, it. I think pa- I think pandas or God just put something here. It's like let's see how far these idiots go to defy evolution. And the yeah. only reason we save pandas is solely because they're a good logo for the WWF. It's really easy to do. It's it also is, zero colors. It is Easy because they're adorable. Like, they're, if, if, if it wasn't a panda bear, if it was, like, the shrieking skeleton monkey, no one would be making those two fuck. No. no like, no, <laughs> no chance. Yeah. It's just, like, a hairless, like, monkey that looks like a demon, like a gremlin. It's just tight It's endangered. Skin. It's, like, good. Yeah. Good. Kill Let it, it be in de- Make it go extinct yeah. like now. It, like, all the monkeys look like burn victims, but they're not. That's just how they look. Yeah, like a they, baboon's ass. It's its whole body, and just an eardrum-piercing scream as their mating yes. call. Yeah, no, we let that die. They let that. We let that die immediately. So um, this is also during the time of medical demonstration for like press and stuff like that. You know the classic where you see a bunch of people. Like, yeah, like the Victorian era. Like we're cutting into the spine. Like it's a you didn't. It's like a scene from the Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes movie. Yeah, exactly. So in 1920, Voronoff is demonstrating his technique before other doctors and the press in a hospital in Chicago and Brinkley shows up uninvited and Brinkley was actually not let in, but his appearance and the fuss he made not being let in elevated the press more. And he got his own demonstration where he transplanted goat testicles into 34 people in a row in front of people. 
What? Were they just, was it, <laughs> he had an assembly line going. He just did it. How did he find that many people? It was that hot. needed it. Dude, the press from him, the one guy getting his wife pregnant, got him insanely popular. The thing we'll do. The things we will do for a rad boner. So, so like, did he have Henry Ford involved in the mix then with the assembly line? Well, uh, turns out J.R. Brinkley was a Nazi sympathizer, so wouldn't, wouldn't put past him. Yeah, connecting dots here. Dude, yeah. J.R. Brinkley, he's doing some stuff the Nazis kind of did. Sewing, yeah. sewing stuff that didn't belong to other stuff onto, <laughs> onto him. stuff, yeah. 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 Uh, how is, set how is so much of the first half of 20th century medicine just being like, well, what if I sew this onto this? <laughs> we'll see what happens. That's how far we've come in like 100 years, dude. This is in 1920. Like imagine. This is in 1920. Yeah. He's done 34 back-to-back-to-back-to-back yeah. goat right. testicle implantations. Imagine you're a chef and your entire thing <laughs> He's like, I'm going to take this hamburger, I'm going to take this sushi, <laughs> and I'm going to together. roll it in a burrito. Uh, yeah, and called, now I made a new thing. It's called Chopped, Rob. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, you just opened up an award-winning food truck here in town. It's not that. Yeah. It's just, literally, those are the ingredients they give you for Chopped. And like, all right, make a meal in 30 minutes. Yeah. Hey, just get out a tortilla. You're good to go. So uh, in 1922... Brinkley travels to Los Angeles at the invitation of Harry Chandler, the owner of the Los Angeles Times, who challenged Brinkley to transplant goat testicle into one of his editors, which is insane. Like, what? how did that conversation... It's like, hey, Jeff, uh, your quote is down. We're going to forgive you. I was, I was about to say. He did it for content. Yep. The editor was the, like... The, the, the chase for content is not a new thing. We no. think we're so original. We think, oh, life is so much different now than it was back in the day. The content industrial complex has been around much longer than yeah. us. Yep. So much so that the owner of a newspaper could tell his editor, hey, we're going to have <laughs> this guy. <laughs> He's going to slice open your scrotum. And he said, basically, if it's successful, I'll make you the most famous surgeon what in America. Successful even it mean? means he doesn't die. <laughs> that's, what, that's all well, it has to mean. He can still keep getting the erections he's already getting? <laughs> yeah. That's how important boners shit, are, shit by the way. Change. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, basically, California didn't recognize Brinkley's license, though. So Fucking Chandler libs. pulls Typical. strings. The media pulls some strings and gets him a 30-day permit. Just to perform this surgery. Perfect. Right. Yeah. So the operator. Like, come on. Like, yeah. literally, there are time writers like, come on. The story's going to be good. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Hey, just us, it's come one on. story. The guy's well, volunteering to do it. Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it went successfully, meaning he didn't die, and Brinkley received the promised attention from the paper. That's. But it wasn't. Like, he just got him in. Yeah. There was no. The, it doesn't matter. Were dude. they like, how do you feel, Steve? Not dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. So Hollywood film stars, I, none of note, uh, start going to him as well. Brinkley is so excited. To, Name names. I, there are no names. It's like none of note. Uh, Brinkley was so taken with the city and all the money it was bringing to him in the 30 days he was there that he was going to relocate his clinic. But uh, your boy Fishbean, mm-hmm. or Fishbine, uh, was like, don't do that. Look at all this shit. And California's like, no, fuck this. We're yeah. not bringing this guy in. So he goes back to um, Milford, Kansas to expand his clinic. But while he's in LA, he takes a tour of a radio station. Perfect. And he realizes how cool, because all of his advertisements so far is direct mail and newspaper. Right. So he's like, oh man. And he's like, radio. Got radio. Everybody. Holy shit. Like I could advertise on that. And this is when, what is it, the 20s? Yeah. So this, is when radio this was is in TV. 22. By the next year in 23, he had enough capital to build KFKB. So he's a podcaster. <laughs> yes. So I'm sorry. This guy is uh, doing stuff for content and then starts a podcast. Yes. It's a story of us. We, what, what, what sort of fucked up time loop is humanity in? <laughs> like this is, what, what, do you, what do they call it in Westworld? Oh, the maze or? No, what? but the, is it just a loop? What do you mean the loop? And I mean oh, we, the loop we, that they're on the yeah, story. Yeah, loop? We yeah. have not locked down the dick pills yet. The narrative, but it's around yeah. the corner probably. I guess this just makes me like it's a potential sponsor. Yeah, so it's going to be like yeah. Right. We're we're no better than this man. We're no no. Of course we're not any better. Instead of putting goat testicles in you, we're putting probably ground up goat testicles in you. So he starts broadcasting in uh, 1923. At the same, around the same time in 1924, however, the Casey Journal uh, fought, like, 
brings down a suit. Someone in St. Louis starts posting scathing reviews of his medical diploma mill, like of medical diploma mills, and you know brings him up into it. And in July 1924, a grand jury in San Francisco hands down 19 indictments to people responsible for either making the fake medical degrees or doctors who received them. Brinkley was one because of him trying to get the medical license, the weirdness around it. Yeah. Like locked in on, it was a red flag, I and guess. He was famous him. also. So. Yeah. He was big in the country at this time. So, uh, but when agents from California came to arrest Brinkley, the governor of Kansas, Jonathan M. Davis, refused to extradite him because he was making the state too much money. Like he was bringing Sick. so much money into Sick. the state for people like traveling just to get their goat right. testicles inside of them. Good tax money. And like he was spending a lot of money in advertising and things like that. Yeah. So it, they were like, no, fuck you. Like this guy's a huge source of yeah. revenue. I mean, it's Kansas. There's nothing happening there. Put, yeah. Just some guy letting some guys shove goat testicles into some people's scrotum. It's what, ha- it's what you got to do sometimes. So Brinkley uh, goes to his radio station airwaves and just starts dunking on everybody and dunking on Fishbein as well. He's like, yeah, fuck these guys. They're trying to podcast. take me down. They're podcast. trying. It's a witch hunt. Yeah. Podcast. It's a witch hunt. Podcast. Yeah. Right. And, uh, his gland business starts making more money than ever. He begins attracting patients from so around so the So people growth. are just like digging in. They're like, you know what? You know what? I'm going to be the change I want to see in the world. I'm getting goat testicles put in my scrotum. I'm going to let this guy squ- slice my scrotum up and put testicles in. I'm t- fucking government can't tell people what to do. And I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to put my foot down. I'm going to be the change that I want to see in the world. I'm going to let this guy slice my scrotum open. This is the man. This man is the monster that the media is trying to paint Joe Rogan as right now. Yes. Yes, absolutely. 100%. Not. Yeah, so um, he basically starts creating like little pharmacies too that sell his patented treatments and yeah, stuff, yeah. and he's getting a cut of that. So he's amassing tons and it's tons like just of wealth. A, uh, this energy drink I bought the other day is like proven to burn fat. And then, like, there's a little cross asterisk. and asterisk next to it. Not proven to burn fat. <laughs> yeah, not, not supported proven by, by the, the FDA. FDA burn, yeah. burn fat. It's no great. supplement is substantiated by the FDA. And if it is, it's, it's very dog rare. Shit. Yeah. You don't it's not going to do anything. Just take, just take legal meth. Just get an Adderall prescription. We're trying. It's hard in Texas. So um, Milford, the city actually benefited as well from all the new ad money. He was able to purchase a new sewage system, sidewalks. He installed electricity in the city. He built a bandstand and apartments for his patients and employees. And he had to build a new post office to handle all of his mail alone. He was named an admiral in the Kansas Navy which is a hilarious what? oxymoron. God, I hate that state. Yeah. It's and, so fucking And dumb. he sponsored the hometown baseball team called, affectionately, the Brinkley Goats. Oh. Yeah. It's because he cut off goat testicles. Here's another fun story. So uh, he's looking for better credentials. In 1925, he goes to Europe searching for an honorary degree. Uh, he gets turned down by everybody except for a university in Pavia, Italy. Uh, but Fishbein and Brinkley's former teacher reach out to the the place and they're like, hey, you cannot give this guy a fucking degree. Right. Like he is a quack. He's do not do it. By the way, how many what's like the what what level of country would you start to be worried about going to the doctor in? Like you have to go to the ER. Well this is Benito Mussolini's Italy. Right. So this one. That sounds pretty yeah. scary. But even like modern Italy, I might be like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'd say like, anywhere in super Eastern Europe or yeah. like. I don't know. A lot of Ukrainian doctors are getting pretty good at <laughs> trauma. A yeah, lot of practice. I mean, yeah. But there's Jesus. a lot of guys like now going to like South American countries or Central American countries to get procedures that the U.S. won't do. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like um, a lot of the stem cell shit in like Panama and Mexico even Mexico dude there was uh, so when I was like 10 oh, Mexico is where they do the Ibogaine shit they Maybe. do that all over South America yeah and Central yeah um, when I was like 10 I went to this island called Saba it's in the I believe it's in the Dutch West Indies um, it's a five mile island it's so tiny yeah but there is a medical school there where it is mostly American students because Granada no, it's Saba, <laughs> but it's similar to that. Like there's, it's been going on forever. People go out of country to get their medical degree, then come back yeah. and get like, no, that's like a joke. They get like, a, yeah. you get like your medical degree in the Caribbean. Yeah. And then you come back Yeah, and like you, I guess there's a way to get qualified or something. I don't know. Does it just Any let doctors you, like, let us skip know. the line where you like, just take, you have to take the final test. I think it's just to the MCAT. Yeah. 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 Basically you no, go. The MCAT's the entrance exam. Yeah. Oh, you're it's right. Like LSAT. So you'd be more like taking the medical bar. Uh, I don't know. If you're a doctor, let us know. Yeah. But, um, I don't know what, what the medical equivalent is. And if you are a doctor, is. don't let us know. So, if you, uh, And if you are a doctor listening to this show, good on you because you're degrading yourself. You're a doctor. You're a doctor. For God's sake. Be better than that. And I mean a medical doctor. If you're like a doctor of, you know, something else. If you're a psychologist, that's even worse. It is. Yeah. Well, unless you're listening to us just to get 
listen to what fucking three idiots sound like. <laughs> you have like a lot of white men going to your practice, and you're like, I need to listen to what idiots listen to. Well, the Irish are impervious to, to get psychoanalysis. Absolutely, we are. That's right. Freud said that. Yeah, and he was, he, he he was even, totally legit. He didn't even say yeah. that. Matt Damon made that up. Did he really? I think so. I think it's just that. Yeah, that sounds right. Why not? Um, so Benito Mussolini is actually the person that rescinded his Italian thing. The wow. fucking dictator of Italy. Say just, what you want about Mussolini. Didn't do anything for anybody here. <laughs> they were just like, oh, okay, he's not an Italian doctor. Fine. Um, so around this time, it's estimated Jr. was making about $11 million a year in today's money. Yeah. So he's rich as fuck. Um, but however, reports of patients who took Brinkley's suggested treatment started showing up sick at other doctors' offices more and more. Was it from the rotting goat testicles? It's that and all bodies? the other. He's selling all sorts of okay. other tonics and shit. Eventually, Merck and Co. Pharmaceuticals, whose medicines Brinkley were, he was basically routinely misprescribing them, uh, requested that the AMA take action. But they were like, we have no f- fucking power over this. We don't have enough regulatory power to do anything or stop them. There's no such thing as regulatory yeah. power. Yeah. It's 1920, whatever. Nobody can do anything. So eventually, uh, there's enough bad press that the Kansas Medical Board uh, held a formal hearing to decide whether he could practice medicine anymore. And by practice medicine, you mean cutting people's scrotums open and shoving goat testicles inside of them. Yes, that. that. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. right, right, right. Uh, he had signed death certificates for 42 people at this point, so he's probably killed 42 people. It sounds... Yeah. yeah. Uh, many of whom were not sick when they showed up to his clinic. Jesus Christ. It's unclear how many more Brinkley's patients may have become ill or later died elsewhere. The medical board revoked his license on the official ruling that he was an outright charlatan. Do you think he told him, like, listen, I'm just going to be honest with you. This is either part... One of, either one of two things is going to touch the sky after I'm done with you. Your dick. <laughs> Or your soul. Or your soul. (laughs) And knowing men back then, they were probably like, I'll roll that dice. Let's go. (laughs) I'll roll that dice right now. It's like, where's the button? I'll press it. Yeah. Uh, Six months after losing his medical license, the Federal Radio Commission also refused to renew his station's broadcasting license. Uh, So he was deplatformed. He was canceled. He was was shadow banned. He was canceled. Deplatformed, whatever you Guess what you do when you get deplatformed, boys in America? You make your own platform. You make your own platform. That's right. That's right. It's a tale as old as time. we talked about this on the Patreon, so get ready for that. It's yeah. bigger and better than ever. Uh, so basically, first what he does after losing his medical license, he launches a bid to become the governor of Kansas right off the bat. Perfect. So he can make the decisions to make himself, you know. Um, he's going to pardon himself. He's going to pardon himself and all this also shit. Also just make himself a doctor. Yeah, and also funnel whatever money he can back into himself. Right. And he, it's like how a, like a Latin American dictator is like... A, like calls themselves like general and admiral and all the shit. Yeah, well, they're on the become... front lines, Rob. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, he has like six months left of his radio station before it expires. So he's like just blasting this campaign, like vote for me, yada, yada. His campaign was conducted as an independent write-in candidate because he waited to declare his candidacy candidacy until after the ballots were printed three days before the election, though, the Kansas attorney general who had prosecuted Brinkley before the medical board, announced that the rules surrounding write-in candidates had changed. Ah. And that the doctor's name... Stolen election. Yes, this is where we get to that. The doctor's name could only be written in one specific way for the vote to count as J. period R. period Brinkley. As a write-in candidate, he received almost 30% of the votes and lost to Harry Hines Woodring. Uh, but an article published at the time in the Des Moines Register estimated that between 30,000 and 50,000 ballots were disqualified. Later, Woodring would admit that had those votes been counted, Brinkley would have won. He would have won. That's a stolen election. He got the election stolen. Yeah, no, he actually had the election stolen. That's a true stolen election. Yeah. Yeah. That's insane to me. Like, like if anyone had a right to say, yeah, that election stolen, it's literally the thing they made up three days before the election happened. That's the tough thing. Unlike the last election, um, which was not stolen, but, uh, that's a tough thing where it's like, obviously, obviously the man who made his livelihood slicing open scrotums to put goat testicles inside of human scrotums and then sewing those scrotums back up and saying, good luck with your boners. <laughs> That man was not qualified and should have been, like, legitimately held back from being the governor of Kansas. However, 
there are still severe ethical issues with how that was gone about. Right. No, and it's, it's like it would have it almost would have been less eth- or like more ethical to just kill him. Right. And it's also it, it brings up an interesting point about repeating lies enough yeah. on media, broadcast media. Right. People buy it. Eventually you say the same shit enough. Right. It just soaks into your fucking yeah. head. This guy was like insane or but I don't think he was insane. I think he was in full control of himself. Like he was a, just a oh, huge no. liar. He was just he was Dude, he's betting on himself. Up, at a, up his own ass, just a big liar. No, he doesn't think he's doing but anything isn't that, wrong. Isn't that like a, that's a fucking hilarious ethical question. Right. Like, this person should absolutely, and this, again, this isn't like coming on Trump or anything like that. This is a totally different. Donald Trump is Abraham Lincoln compared to this guy. Th- there is, like, this guy should not be in charge of anything. Yeah. Like, it, like you have to, like, stop that from right. happening. So that's what they did. But... What's the ethical way to stop that from happening? It's probably not changing the, the rules the, three days before the election. That's the least transparent right. way to do that. It's, really, <laughs> it's fucked up. Yeah, it is. Uh, so he did have an election stolen from him. He ran again and lost legitimately this time. Um, but then, you know, so he's done in Kansas. He sells KFKB to an insurance company, and he moves to Del Rio, Texas, just across a, bid, a bridge from Mexico, where he could operate a high-power radio station with impunity. Because in Mexico... Basically, when they were dividing up all of the radio signals mm-hmm. of North America, Canada and the USA got to split them all up. Mexico didn't get shit. Right. So they have their own radio frequencies. They just broadcast that. And it's like, yeah. well, if you're close to us, tough shit, you're going to hear it. Right. So uh, they're like, they see this guy come and they're like, yeah, dude, we'll fucking, you can buy a station from us. We don't get poor. No, he's rich as shit. He's yeah. making 11 mil a year. Yeah. So shoving goat nuts. They By give, the way, goat nuts don't cost that much. <laughs> they're cheap as fuck. They're, yeah. Goats. They, they're, they, they fuck a lot. They're good to go. So they give him a 50,000 watt radio license and, uh, he begins building these 300 foot towers in Mexico, uh, known as border blasters. So people could like hear them across the border. Mexican radio is pretty common term. Damn. I'm sure you're, familiar with it uh though his signal had been revoked in kansas his signal was so strong that it could be heard in kansas still and then in 1932 the mexican government loved him so much they decided to increase his wattage to 150,000 watts then several months later brinkley was allowed to increase to 1 million watts making his radio station far and away the most powerful radio station on the planet hell yeah so on a clear night, his radio broadcast could be heard in Canada Hell from yeah. Mexico. Uh, according to accounts of the time, the signal was so strong that it turned on car headlights, made bed springs hum, and caused broadcasts to bleed into telephone conversations in other states. Local residents claimed to not need a radio in uh, Del Rio, Texas, to hear Brinkley Station. Ranchers claimed they could receive it through the metal in their fences and in their fillings. Good Lord. It was the strongest radio station ever on the planet. So, like, it was just so strong that it would just show up in their brains? <laughs> they just hear it in if their heads? It's too close to metal? You're just like, oh, God! <laughs> no, it would, like, you'd either hear it in the metal, or if you had, like, metal yeah. in your teeth and shit, you'd hear it in your head. That's horrifying. So, uh, he just continued to do the medical advice kind of stuff. Uh, male listeners were offered an array of expensive, expensive concoctions, uh, At the clinic in the hotel where he lived in Del Rio, he also performed prostate operations. He also began selling airtime to other advertisers at $26,300 an hour in today's value, giving rise to new Huckster shilling products. So he's getting a cut of that. Like uh, one was called rubber stamping, whatever they're selling. Crazy water crystals, genuine simulated diamonds, life insurance, and an array of religious paraphernalia. We're also Mike Malloy situation there. Yeah. Uh, Life insurance is real real uh, fast and loose back then. Yeah, but more Timothy Dexter. He's got kind of like his claws and everything. Yeah. He also began to pack the radio station with up-and-coming country and root singers, getting it more popular. Uh, helped launch uh, Palsy Montana, Red Foley, Gene Autry, Jamie Rogers, the Carter family, the Pickard family, and others. He became known as, like, he created, like, Hillbilly Hollywood. He was getting a lot of these country people off the ground. Sick. It's insane. Godfather of country music. Um, so eventually the U S starts like talking to Mexico, like we got to stop this. You're you're fucking our shit up with this stuff. So they decided to shut it all down. And by 1934, Mexico revoked Brinkley's broadcast license. Um, the Mexican army actually had to show up at his doorstep to shut him down. Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, he continued to perform operations in Texas at his practice and shifted from, uh, 
I don't know. What? Ta- the same operation? No, he's, he, he stopped doing that. He switched to vasectomies and prostate rejuvenations. You got to pivot every now and then. Uh, you're going to need to go into more detail on the prostate rejuvenation. Because that sounds like a vibrator I'm pretty sure it was on like, a stick. I think it was that with like an enema. Okay. Yeah. And he was doing electric stuff earlier, right? So yeah. Is it like a vibrator with a little with the little taser? I, I, I don't. Situation? I don't. Have just a finger attachment. Yeah. yeah. Uh, by 1936, he had enough wealth to build a mansion for himself and his wife on 16 acres. He, you can. He had already had that wealth. Yeah. Totally. He. Uh, you can still go see this house in Del Rio. It's the Brinkley Mansion. Okay. It is a the mansion that goat testicles built. Yeah. Basically, the house that balls built. <laughs> Um, he surrounded it with, he filled the mansion with a dozen Cadillacs, a foaming fountain garden surrounded by 8,000 bushes, exotic animals imported from the Galapagos Islands, and a swimming pool with a 10-foot diving board. He continued living high in Del Rio until 1938, when a rival doctor began cutting into his business. Um, basically... Who cares? Yeah, it didn't matter. Uh... How old was he at this point? He was, he was born in 85. 85, so 15 plus 38. He's in his fifties. Yeah, sixties, uh, fifties, so, whatever. Who cares? So basically, he's made mil- But the more the more important thing is he's made millions. He doesn't have to do anything anymore. Yeah, but the problem is Fishbein starts entering the picture again and publishing this two part series that's just ripping him apart. Mm-hmm. Brinkley makes the ultimate mistake. He sues Fishbein for libel Uh-oh. and two hundred fifty thousand in damages, which is about four point six million in current value. But so. that implies discovery. Yep. So the trial begins on March 22nd of 1939. Uh, in, in a matter of a few days, a jury finds Fishbein right, stating that Brinkley should be considered a charlatan and a quack in the ordinary, well-understood meaning of the words. The jury verdict then... He's a witch. Sh- ...unshields him from everything he can get sued for. Right. So he gets a barrage of lawsuits uh, by some estimates well over $3 million in total value at that time. Right. So that's way more than he has. Because yeah, we're yeah. talking like... Hundreds of thousands, equivalent right. to 11 million. So around this time, too, the Internal Revenue Service begins investigating him for tax fraud because they're like, well, this guy's got a lot of fucking money. And what the uh, hell? Yeah, where's, where's those taxes? He, as quickly as he became wealthy and powerful, he declares bankruptcy in 1941, the same year the U.S. and Mexico reached an agreement on allocating radio bandwidth, and they fully shut down all of the X stations. Soon after his bankruptcy, the U.S. Post Office Department began investigating him for mail fraud, and Brinkley became a patient himself for the first time. A patient himself for the first time, not a doctor. Okay. He suffered three heart attacks and had one of his legs amputated due to poor circulation. And then shortly after... What I would have done is just uh, 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 put some goat testicles in my leg. Slice it's weird. Open. That's it's weird how he didn't do that. Yeah, it's I almost I, like well, he, he was the patient. It wasn't the doctor. It wasn't his call. Do it yourself. If you're a good there enough doctor. A, yeah, there's a Soviet or something. Have you seen that meme on some of the history meme sites where, like, uh, I think it's a Soviet doctor who was stuck at the uh, in Antarctica had to perform gallbladder surgery on himself. Jesus Christ! Really? Yeah, really. No, there's pictures of it too. Oh my God! Yeah. Did he get to anesthetize himself a little bit? Uh, I think I maybe he, local a little uh, bit. Yeah, I mean, I guess you couldn't because yeah. you have to know what you're doing. Right. You can't just be asleep. Yeah. <laughs> He's so good. He did it in his sleep. Right. That'd be great. Uh, he died May 26, 1942, penniless and of heart failure Damn. in San Antonio, to Texas. a real one. RIP to an American hero. Yeah. He you, died during World War II, so that counts as dying in World War II. Yeah. He just made it. Yeah. Just he actually, statistic. one thing I forgot to write down, he was sent over for World War One, and he just faked a nervous breakdown, and they sent him back a month later. Oh. Yeah. He should have rubbed some goat testicles on his brain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's the story goat of Sanders. John Romulus Brinkley, the goat goat. Yeah. What'd you guys learn? Uh, that medicine was a lie until 1933. <laughs> I'll just call it like their medicine wasn't real. Until and to, it pretty much pre-World War II medicine was fake. Pretty bad. Yeah, it's fake. Yeah. It's I mean, there, was, there were people doing things, right? Yeah. There were people doing things very well, wrong. And again, this is where it comes into... So. I wouldn't necessarily call him a doctor or medicine. I would just say he's a content creator, and he is all about content. He's, content a, medical, he's a medical influencer. Well, he, he was the original influencer. Well, yeah. One thing I definitely learned today is when... And I hate... I've been doing this lately where I like kind of crap on people to the right more than the left, and I don't mean to do that. But like, 
the modern libertarian kind of takes regulations for granted. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? No, it's it's the elevator <laughs> argument. It's like, well, if they have a bad elevator, don't do business yeah, in that building. It's elevator, like, that's not how it works. You right. can't wait for people to die right. to make sure things are going to work. Yeah. Like, they need to be checked on. There's it's, a certain amount. Yeah, like, there's just... There's and there's, just, there's a pendulum swing on the other side of that where things can be overregulated. And oh, I want to acknowledge that a thousand percent. As someone that's doing our taxes right now, yeah. the fact, for what we made on this show... The amount of work it's taking to get the taxes done on right. it. And the amount is, that's going to get taken from, from us for making, like, really no money. Yeah. Like, I, we essentially fucking barely broke, like, we barely, I'm not going to get into it, but, like, the amount of shit it's we have. It's absurd that one dime is being taken from us. Right. For how little it is. Right. Exactly. But it's because of, like, it's assholes like this. Any penny is taken from any yeah. American citizen, okay? If I Taxation want- is theft. You, yeah, no, if, that's if that's, I want to fi- if I right. want a pothole filled, I'll get a sack of my own quarters and dump it into that pothole. I'll pull myself up on my bootstraps and I'll go put yeah. it in. Yeah, cops should have to do bake sales. But if no, they there want is money. like a, there is like a serious like regulation privilege. Oh, for with sure. Living in modern times that a yeah. lot of people just kind of forget about. And I am I, of the opinion, yeah, like with taxes and all that stuff, like it's yeah, like there's overregulation and blah blah blah, a million things like that, 100%. But like we live at this like baseline that people forget like, Oh, that is a very recent baseline. Oh yeah. It's, it's <laughs> like, not, it's not something that's been around for a long right, time. Right. And when you see people start ripping back regulations, you're like, okay, like maybe that helps right. one person. It's just something yeah. that people now take as common sense, but it wasn't common sense very long ago. Do you know what I mean? No, absolutely. Yeah, that's what I learned. Yeah. That and like, you learn that, hey, deep like being deplatformed and switching platforms and making your own radio station isn't new. That's yeah. not a fucking it's ground way more rig- profitable too. Yeah. Yeah. Now those regulations, fuck those regulations. Beat the, beat his bad ideas with a good idea, because it shouldn't be that hard to convince people to not shove goat testicles into their scrotums. And if they do let someone put goat testicles into their scrotums, well. That is sort of a modern natural selection. Yeah, absolutely. It's also kind of, yeah, it's on them. It's yeah, like, it, that, that is on them. It, I agree. Whenever people kind of like, and, go, no, no, whenever people go after like uh, any type of media now where they're just like, oh, you're not smart enough to make up a decision. Anything you hear on a podcast, anything you hear from the news, you're not smart enough to make up your mind whether or not that's true. Right. I will say, I do think that algorithmically there does become a problem though. Like, you like I said before, these people were just hearing shit over and over and over again because that was the radio station, right? So it kind of seeped into their well, heads. The radio says it. Well, yeah, and the new electric, <laughs> the new electric truth box keeps telling me <laughs> to vote for this guy. <laughs> Who's telling me that? Oh, him. Well, uh, he's on the radio. Yeah. No, but I'm saying like there is an argument to be made that like okay, I get it. The algorithm is going to feed you what you want to see, but also if you're doing your own independent research, you keep getting fed the same bullshit algorithm. You can't get right. trapped in a knowledge right, loop right, there. Right. Like there, there's a fine line there, but I do agree with you that people by and large should be allowed to make their own fucking decisions on the content they consume. And, and again, also don't make any health decisions based on, on like a fucking podcast. A podcast. What the fuck right. are you yeah. doing? Yeah. You're insane. If you do that, don't, don't go to a doctor, listen to them. Like get other sources of information. If you want to like hear something, like if you hear something on a podcast and you're like, that's interesting. I'll ask my doctor about it or I'll do a little research from other doctors yeah like anything yeah uh, but um yeah and that's kind of an interesting part of the story too is like the ama really couldn't do anything because most of the things that fish was writing in were medical journals right what doctors read those yeah right. i don't really trust doctors anymore either okay that's fine but what i'm saying is like you have a peer-reviewed journal versus a guy who has just carte blanche ability to say whatever he wants on the radio yeah that information is not disseminated the same way right so that creates a problem as well but Last time I actually went to the doctor, she's like, have you heard of David Goggins? <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. That's kind of awesome. She's like, why don't you just will yourself to health? Did she really say that? More or less, yes. Yeah, that's insane. Um, she could tell he was receptive, like just from the look. Yeah, she saw the beard. Yeah, she's she like, was like, he'd be receptive to this. He listen to JRE, bro? <laughs> she did. She asked me that. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Uh, but yeah, all right. Who's Hitler? Uh, regulations. Not, not, um, I think, Benito uh, Mussolini. <laughs> no, no, it's the fish man. Fish bean. Yeah. He brought him down because he was a quack. He was penniless because of the fish man. He was rich because he was lying. 
But whose fault is that? that he was living the American dream. You, you know, know, it's, it's kind of... What's the city? level of lying? That's a great question, actually, is like, what's the level of lying that is, you're allowed to make money on? Before well, it becomes, you can't make before, false medical claims. Before you, Why? Before someone has to intervene. I think... I don't know. That's a, that's a much bigger because question than you think it is. Because where does the responsibility go from... From the, the person off- making the lie to the person believing it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where does um, it cross over? Believe in the mm, lie. That's that's a tricky one, Rob. That's it's not pretty, a that's it's a fun that's a fun that's a question. that's a case by case kind of thing. That's I think a fun question. It is a fun question. I so. say it's always on the people believing the lie and join my new religion. Uh, I I don't feel bad for Scientologists at all. Fuck no, it. let's go. No, no, not with the evidence that's out now. Right. Maybe the first way more credible months. than any other religion. I mean, it's got the word. I follow the science. <laughs> that's all. It all the way believe to all science. Yeah, <laughs> dude. How are they? How is that not there? Slogan. Believe the science. Follow the science. Believe the science. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. I mean, there's a reason you have to pay a lot just to get to the Xenu yeah. story. Uh, science ain't free. Yeah. It's true. It costs money to make science happen. Yeah. That's another thing they should say. Like, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you don't have to pay for us? Uh, it was NASA free? Oh, no, it's not. Yeah. Scientology. Scientology. Yeah. <laughs> That's their new ad campaign. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a trendy billboard. It's science they really i don't know how they haven't done follow why are we giving yet. this away for free oh, that's a good I question it's a great question well speaking of that be sure to check out our we patreon really, hold on. what's your price for how much do you would you have to get paid to know that your <laughs> your dope new campaign slogan would get a lot of people to join scientology how much would like I have? How to, much? I, might, that question's confusing. Well, like, yeah, the ethical, what are you like, what's the ethic? What's the amount of money oh. where you could uh, no, where you could like ignore the, PR, the ethics of uh, oh, getting oh, people like, into Scientology? Yeah. So we're the PR company for Scientology. Right, 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 right. We what's have, the number? What's the what's the number they lay on the table where they're like, yeah, uh, slaves serve Tom Cruise, but uh, hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say it's kind of low, like. One, the effort in Scientology was pretty low to begin with. Yeah, I don't care about others at all. I know you don't. That's a pretty common trait of sociopaths. That's fine. Yeah. What's your, You're not a sociopath. Your You're not a sociopath. That's the funny part. No, because I don't care about myself enough. No, that's not it either. I've seen you. <laughs> I've seen you do things that make you show empathy. I gave a homeless man $10 this weekend out front of Barb's. And I, I was rewarded by almost getting shot on 36th. You, that's inaccurate. You were two blocks away from where the shots were fired. Um, either way, I heard the pop, pop, pop. <laughs> and I heard, I saw a sea of people run towards me. So yeah. that's why I don't go. They're running anymore. past you. Anyway, enough's enough. Go to patreon.com slash softcore history to check out. No, our- softcore, right? It's Softcore History. Softcore History. Okay. Softcore History. Well, it's patreon.com slash softcore history. It might be softcore-history. I don't know. Sure, you'll find it. The fucking just Google is. Patreon Softcore go History. Or just go to Patreon and search Softcore History. You'll That'll find That'll work, it. too. Yeah, so $5 a month. We got new stuff coming out every week. It's you really, really love funny. It. We got like, the game show really, out. Really, really, we got really the mailbag good. out. Yep. We're going to we, have more content We were dying out. laughing at the shit we made so far. Really enjoyable. Check out softcorehistory.com. Check out our merch. Buy some stuff. We got a lot of cool videos We're coming in a from uh, Topsy shirt right Two now. Irish to Die. Two Irish to Die shirt. Shout out for that. Yeah, Topsy Dan's shirt. got the Topsy shirt on. We got a bunch of new snapbacks. We've got the Uni- Unity, the Unity, Unabomber, Unabomber t shirt. Hoodie. Um, got a bunch of stuff out there, so please check it out. And then please, as always, listen because you already are. So get Leave other people to listen. Leave Tell a review. About it. Hit the like button, like and subscribe, five stars, all that shit. Um, but for uh, Rob Fox and Andrew Chester, I'm Jake Goldman. You just got soft served.